Welcome back to another Basics Game Maker Studio tutorial and this is a follow up to one of my last videos which was about hitboxes and bounding boxes so if you missed this check it out because I'm referring to some of that stuff here and one of uh, my subscribers asked me how you can actually do the hitbox so something like this you're just doing a hitbox and then something is happening and you're seeing nothing because well, hitboxes are invisible most of the time. They are a little sneaky helper to do uh, things in the background which feel natural to you. But there are two separate units. First of all, the animation of a character and then the hitbox or attack animation. So for example here, bam, bam, bam. So if you're thinking, oh, okay, so this looks interesting. So one box is basically touching the other one. I'm gonna go into some details. How you can actually do this in Game Maker Studio the easiest way. So stay tuned. This is One Up Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you are new here and you want definitely more, consider subscribing to our channel because I try to upload every second day or every day a video and share my stuff. That would be sweet. So Let's go back to the game. So what you're seeing here in front of you is my Patreon exclusive top-down engine, which I'm building. So if you want to grab this tile set collision based engine, and of course, lots of other stuff, you have to be a Patreon. If for everybody else, well, <laughs> you just came for the tutorial. And basically this is in the end all there is to it because uh, hitboxes are not the most complex uh, thing to understand so let's go in here make some neat illustrations so lots of times you're having a hero player enemy whatever you like and then it has an animation and let's say for example it has having a swing this one this one downwards like and then you need to establish one thing which is very very crucial here you need to have mojo no you need to have what is this you need to have your hitbox around it so for example here let's say this is your animation so this guy is doing its animation then he's doing this slash attack and now you need to distinguish depending for example if it's if he's going downwards or if he's going for example sideways then of course you need a side attack slash front slash side and then of course you need a different slash to the side this stuff i'm not going to show you because this is part of the animation which you're doing on um, let's say your player so, but of course this is for example what i did in another game i had my guy animating so the animation looks like this let's go for attack side this is just three animations which is not too much in my opinion but okay he's just doing some karate and well, centering here and then basically I have this guy then I paint and make an attack which is just coming here and then disappearing and then as a second step I create a hitbox box let's call it hitbox because it is a hitbox and that hitbox needs a few things it needs four parameters and this thing of course needs uh, just two parameters but this is just a different thing so our hitbox needs first of all a point of origin so where to spawn that thing let's make it fat point here and then it needs four anchor points to spawn a rectangle normally it's a rectangle you can of course go with um, ellipse or whatever shapes but this is the, the most common one that's why sometimes you're having wonky hitboxes and let's see four points then and this is how you can spawn it for let's say for the side version or if you want to have this dude here no 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 uh, uh, here we go you go away you're not needed then your hitbox looks something like this and of course then your point your starting point which is the most important one you spawn it here let's make it in the correct color and on the correct layer here and then of course once again four points pew of course this is a little bit outside doesn't really matter this is just for illustration purposes that's the same stuff which you saw on the screen so therefore you need first of all your first point which is the blue one 
which showed you the origin point and then the four anchor points. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm just creating an instance, the hitbox, and I'm passing in four coordinates, which are defining your rectangle. So X1, X2, X and so on. For example, I am, if, we, if I go into my hitbox, I'm just drawing it so you, you can actually see it in the debug mode, the magic mode. So basically from our starting point, from our X and Y position, then add the first X, the second X, and this is how you spawn a rectangle. Then of course here, so you can actually see uh, the origin point as well. And therefore I just say, hey, X and Y, and just make a little circle so you can actually see that. And then, well, if you see my last video tutorial, take and go and just make a collision rectangle with the same parameters because this is the invisible part. This is just for you for debugging so you can actually see how big your rectangle needs to be. And then of course, with the stuff you want to collide with and then bam, do something in the code here. So let's say for example, we could say, what do we do with the instance? We kick it around. So let's go and Rex plus, I don't know. Let's kick it 10 pixels to the right. Of course, this of course this is not the best solution because it doesn't matter where you hit it, you will uh, kick it to the right, but let's go. It doesn't really matter, but as you can see, this is your first interaction and this is your first action. Let's go. Bam, bam, bam. And if you're wondering, ah, I actually talked about this, never mind. So this is the Patreon stuff. Um, so how can we actually set it up? So what I do, and of course this is up to you. I have my uh, player, he's animating. So here, uh, no other animation end. And this is what I do. For example, if I'm, I'm in the state of attacking, so this is the state machine, a regular one, then I'm just saying, hey, if you're in the state of attacking and you are on your last animation sprite, so here, we need to, first of all, create six variables. And of course, I you can have them as standard variables, but I prefer them be temporal because after one step, they're being discarded because I don't really need them. This, they're just being spawned once. And as you can see, they are being put in, first of all, as defining the X and Y positions of the rectangle of the hitbox. And of course, here, the origin point where to actually spawn that thing. So relatively from the X and Y position of our player plus here, because depending well, where you're standing, is it here, is it here, is it here, or is it here? You need to define that in advance. And for example, what I do, and this is of course up to you, now you need to say, okay, but where uh, do I need to start? And then you're thinking, okay, you need to have a method where you can actually set up um, in which direction to spawn and what kind of parameters to pass in. So what I do, I'm just, just saying, hey, what kind of sprite index am I actually having? So is this guy to the back? Is this guy leaning to the front or is it leaning to the side? And then some extra check, is the image, is the image x scale minus one or one? So let's go for the easiest version. So let's say we are front. So front is this little sprite here. So he is pointing downwards with his face because this is uh, well the thing. And then I'm saying, hey, Xbox, so uh, hitbox, Xbox, hitbox, X and Y position is basically just a little bit more down. So I just say four pixels. And this is thing you need to adjust every time for your game. So it feels right and it looks right. So, so you have the, your separation between, well, your box, which you're spawning. So this is not the box. This is the box. And then um, with your animation. So they kind of overlap, but that thing is doing the action and that stuff is just cosmetic, but it feels for the player that it's just one thing, which it is not. So here I'm just saying, hey, uh, position X, where to spawn it and a little bit to the bottom. Why here zero? Because, well, our guy is always centered at this position. So to his feet, so therefore, it's pretty easy to get him there. Uh, let's go back to the player. So basically here, 
we have first of all the the, the fat blue point already achieved here and then of course maybe you want to have it spread even therefore you need to go a little bit to the left of the x side and a little bit to the right to the x side and of course zero because you're starting from your pawn and then downwards and then you're having a well a rectangle of 16 by 16 which is the idea same for if you're back so you just go a little bit up minus and of course those values are similar first y point is zero but here we go upwards minus 16 and kind of similar you do the box for well the left and right positions and then well once we started that's actually basically it <laughs> then this is just basically it so here my sprite index is to the side but but image index is to well is um, my image x image x scale is one so therefore it's minus one and basically it's the same rectangle wham downwards as you can see origin point is a blue one the rest is that and this is just overlapping so you can actually not see it and of course the um, well hitbox what do else do you need to have besides that well this is just a thing which you can of course uh, decide because hitboxes are not things which are lingering around all the time you just give it a nice short time so 30 is quite a lot so you for example if you are taking a lot of times uh, let's say five or three or two or one is definitely good enough because you're just flashing that thing like attack once and bam then it is gone and of course here you can do that the old simple way with a one-time collision or the a little bit more advanced which I told uh, which I showed in the other video with DS lists and this is in my opinion the preferred method for such melee attack boxes because sometimes you want to hit multiple instances therefore you definitely need that and it would feel kind of awkward if you are attacking two guys at once but just one is getting harmed so here once again check it out and of course if you we are already in here so let's say you are using the old method then maybe besides pushing around you can do some um, i don't know critical hits then maybe you are just checking because you are uh, melee uh, weapon has some fire properties so maybe you're checking some stuff and all this stuff you actually do in here and for example i don't know let's say va hit chance crit you say hey i random range so between zero and let's say 30 or something which you adjusted for yourself and for example if um i don't know if if you are if your crit chance is smaller than 15 let's say, let's say this would be 50 percent let's make it 100 so the numbers are easy so let's say we are bigger than 80 so basically 20 percent chance then uh, crit is true and then for example we can i don't know var crit false and then we can actually do something with the damage we just multiply it with a critical uh, damage multiplier but this is a stuff you can actually put in here and but well, this is just for you so you understand here put in stuff which you want to do to the other instance criticals and uh, elemental damages pushing and god knows what else and here you just do the stuff because you can put in a script if it's lots of stuff or if not well right here so that was pretty much it hopefully now you understand how to set up your hitboxes and what the difference is between the animation the let's say second object which you just spawning once and then your hitbox which you overlay it so it is one cohesive system which well, the player doesn't see but you know it is there so hopefully that was of interest to you and now you know how to spawn it in game maker studio have a good one one up in